Hello everyone, my name is Adiemi Uluwa Dimnadi Debra, the creator of Compass 7.0. And in this video, we're going to be doing correction to the most recent geography practical exam, 2024, which was written earlier this year. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to check out the other videos. I know a lot of students struggle with map work as they find it one of the most challenging aspects of geography. But the moment you understand the concept, I'm sure you'll come to love map work. So apart from doing correction on the practical geography, we're also going to be taking the first 10 questions from the objective that have to do with map work. And so with Without wasting any more time, let's get on to the video. Study the map of Georgia District and use it to answer questions 1 to 10. So what is the scale of the map in statement form? Sadly, this question is incomplete because I'm sure you must have noticed that the bar graph has no numbers. And I made sure to confirm whether it was just the copy that I had, but it seems it was a general problem. But that doesn't mean that we're going to ignore this question. So firstly, we're going to measure the distance between the two lines. And on doing that, we get two centimeters. Since we don't have numbers on it, we can deduce the values and hence the interval between the numbers. Looking at past work examinations, the scale of this graph can either be one of two options. For the first one, the interval between them can be 1, and hence our values will be 0, 1, 2, 3 kilometers. So we're going to have 2 centimeters representing 1 kilometer. And recalling that 1 kilometer is equal to 100 centimeters, therefore 2 centimeters will be the same as 100,000 centimeters. And hence, converting this to fraction, we have 1 ratio 50,000. And it's the same thing as one centimeter to half kilometers. And this is the same as option C. Or if this wasn't the scale they intended to give, it could also be like this with an interval of two. And in this case, we're going to have two centimeters representing two kilometers. And following the same thing we did previously, that will give us a final answer of one centimeter to one kilometer which is also option B. So it could be 50-50. Since we're not giving numbers, we don't know what exactly the question wanted to ask. The contour interval on the mapped area is, so this question is straightforward, the interval between the contour lines. So now let's look for two contour lines that have their numbers written on them so we can deduce the interval. And we can see that in the southeastern part of the map. We see a contour with a height of 150, the next one is not given, and then we see another with a height of 50. So that means we have 150-50. The black one is obviously 100. So that means that the interval between them is 50 meters. Looking at the map and the options again, it is very possible for someone just to look at this, skim through the question, just pick out the word contour, and then assume that maybe the question is asking for the highest interval on the map. It may look funny, but don't underestimate exam tension. So always try to calm down and pick the correct answer. It's good to be fast, but accuracy is equally, if not more, important. The feature at the mouth of River Bala is likely to be the mouth of a river is where it feeds into a sea, an ocean, or an even bigger river. And so looking at River Bala, its mouth is here. The answer to this is without a doubt, delta, because it looks like a bird's foot. A delta is a fan or triangular shaped landform created by the deposition of materials as it reaches the sea or ocean, exactly what we have here. It's definitely not a saddle as we've discussed in our former correction videos. It's also not a river capture because we need two parallel rivers to even consider that. And I'm sure most of us have seen waterfalls in pictures or movies or even in person. On a map, waterfall occurs where the contour lines converge, indicating a steep slope. Since they fall from great heights, after eliminating all the other options, I'm sure we can undoubtedly say that the answer is delta. What is the direction of Sasa from Moma? So firstly, let's identify the settlements and put cardinal points on them. The question has already drawn a line connecting them, but the cardinal point will give you the exact direction. So from here, our reference point is MoMA. Remember that from, the word from is the indicator. So the direction of Sasa from MoMA will be southwest. Remember, east comes before west when you've identified north and south. Don't make the mistake of swapping east with west, please. 
the highest point on the map area is approximately. So this question is similar to finding the value of the highest contour of the map, but a bit tricky. We've already gotten our contour interval as 50 meters, but as you can see, none of the options we are given are multiples of 50. So the word approximately in the question is key. Firstly, let's identify the highest contour on the map. So looking at the southeastern part of the map, we have our highest contour as 300. Since we already know our interval as 50 meters, deducing the highest contour interval on the map 300 wasn't difficult. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, and that leaves us with the last one here being 300. But as you can see, 300 is not in the options, but the closest answer to it will be option A, 325 meters. Some people might argue, why not any of the other options, since at least all the options present have 300 and something there. But the reason 325 is the best answer is because we already have our highest contour as 300. And that means that the contour after that would be 350. But since we can't see that contour on our map, that lets us know that the highest point on the map will be between 300 and 349, making the best answer 325 meters, as that's the only one that falls within this range. The distance as the crow flies from Opum to Moma is approximately, so first you put a cardinal point on the places in question and draw a line connecting them. If you've been following our correction series, you must know that as the crow flies simply means distance on a straight line. Now measuring the distance between the two settlements, we have 12 centimeters. Sadly, we don't have a scale and we're not going to be able to use the distance between the two settlements to deduce the scale from our two options because after converting our 12 centimeters to map distance, using both of the likely scales we got in question one, they both give us answers in the options. So again, we have to gamble. Which part of the mapped area can coastal fishing be practiced? Coastal fishing is still fishing. So looking at the map, where do you expect people to be able to catch fish? It will be an area close to the sea. And the sea is located in this area, in the northeastern portion of the map. The question could have also come like this, which settlements engage in coastal fishing? So all we have to do is identify those settlements that are close to the sea. And in that case, that would be Kako and Moma. The feature marked Q on the mapped area can be described as, so now the structurally labeled Q looks very strange. So let's define all the options and understanding before we come back to this question. A meander, a winding course or curve that develops along the side of a river. This occurs when rivers cannot flow straight due to low gravity. Hence, we see bends and curves in the river's course and is a feature of the middle course of a river. Leave, a natural or artificial wall or embankment along a river. Embankment means a wall that is used to hold back water and contain it. Normally, as the river flows, it deposits sediment by the side on the river bank. But leaves can also be artificial in the sense that people can create it to prevent flooding or erosion. So it's also a feature of the lower course of a river. Elbow of capture denotes a sharp turn in a course of a small river into a larger one, almost at right angles. So the right angle is typically formed due to the difference in the river's flow or the rate of sediment loads. So the elbow of capture gets its name from the fact that the smaller river is captured by the larger river. It is a feature of the upper course of the river. So now I'm sure that we're already eliminating some of the options. Oxbow Lake. U-shaped or horseshoe pool that forms when the wide meander of a river is cut off, usually in marshy or swampy areas. A river's meander or bend is eroded and isolated from the main river, forming a lake or freestanding body of water. This is a feature of the lower course of a river. So now that we've understood all the features, let's try to identify what Q is. So now we can see that Q is not a meander as it looks nothing like a bend in the river. In fact, it's not even part of the river. Q doesn't look like a wall or sediment by the side of the river. It's not on both sides of the river if it was to prevent a flood. And it's not even following the course of the river. And Q is not an elbow of capture because we would need two rivers for that. And Q looks nothing like a small river. It also doesn't look like it has any plan of entering River Bala. And don't forget that the elbow of capture is a feature of the upper course of the river. And this river should be in its lower course as we can even see it entering the larger sea. And so the answer is D, Oxbow Lake. But even though we got the answer by elimination, let me still prove it to you. 
Firstly, we can see that the figure Q is U or horseshoe shaped. It looks like it was formed from the meander that is directly above it. So it was cut off from the main river and is now a freestanding body of water. And the final key pointer is that it occurs in swampy areas, looking at those symbols along the river just above it. On the key, those symbols represent swamps. And so without a doubt, the feature marked Q is an oxbow lake. Which of the following settlement is likely to engage in fish processing? Again, we are asked about fishing. We had already established before that coastal fishing would take place in the area closest to the sea, which is the northeastern part of the map. Now, coastal fishing is fishing. Don't think they are trying to confuse you with words. For you to process fish, first of all, you have to catch them. So that means that the towns that will engage in fishing will be those close to the sea, which are Moma and Kako. And the one that's present in the options is Kako, option C. What is the approximate bearing of Lola from Sasa? So first, we draw a cardinal point on the places in question and draw a line connecting them. Then in order not to make any mistake, we place a protractor on Sasa. Since the question has already told us that this is from Sasa, remember that from is our indicator. So taking a bearing from zero to our blue line, we have 155 degrees, which is close to option B. So the bearing is straightforward, unlike the one we had in 2021 correction, which was a bit tricky. So remember to take your correct reference points. The word from is the indicator, as I've mentioned before. And also remember that the bearing is from north to the line drawn. And with that, let's move on to practical geography. Study the map extra provided on a scale of 1 ratio 50,000 and answer the questions that follow. In your answer booklet, draw an outline of the mapped area to a third of its original size and state the scale of the new outline. In your outline, insert a name River Niamso and its direction of flow with an arrow. The ridge at the southeastern part of the mapped area, Jimmy Soka Kraba settlements. The question said we are going to redraw the whole map, not a section, to a third of its original size. The next thing would be to identify whether it's going to be a reduction or an enlargement. And if you've watched my video on this topic, then you remember that when we have a fraction, we're going to reduce the map. This is just like the second case in our map reduction and enlargement video, where we have a factor, which is 1 over 3, and we have to find the new scale. So now let's calculate the new scale of the map. So now looking at our map, we're going to measure the length and breadth, and that gives us 29.4 centimeters by 29.4 centimeters. And we're going to reproduce a smaller version of this, which is a third of the original. But what is the scale of this new map going to be? You can pause the video here and try to figure it out yourself. So you must have identified that we are doing a map reduction. Recall that when we have the old scale and we need to find the new scale, all we need to do is the old scale times the factor which will give us the new scale in representative fraction. We have the old scale, which is the scale of the given map, 1 ratio 50,000, and the factor 1 over 3. So our new scale will be 1 ratio 150,000. Remember that when the map reduces, the scale increases. Notice how I didn't just multiply 50,000 by 1 over 3. I had to put it in its fractional form. So to get the length and breadth of our new map, we're going to multiply the dimensions of our old map by 1 over 3 or divided by 3. It's the same thing, really. I'm doing that to give us 9.8 centimeters by 9.8 centimeters. The map reduced to a third of its original size with the specifications 9.8 by 9.8, and let's not forget our scale, 1 which 150,000. The most important thing which will help us add features on our new map, the grid. So you can pick a suitable number of boxes you are convenient with. I think 10 by 10 boxes is perfect. Then divide the length and breadth of your maps, both the original and new, by 10. And this will give you the measurement for each small box. Remember that you are going to draw a grid on both the new and the original map. So now let's start adding the required features to our new map, starting with the river Nyamsu and its direction of flow. Looking at our map, let's identify the river. Zooming in. We can see River Niamsu beginning from here, and then it flows down. And also here we can see another River Niamsu written. That means the river was so long, the name was written twice here and here. So I've tried to highlight the course of the river in dark blue, and also in the names that I showed you before. So now let's add this to our map. As you can see, I've already drawn my grid on the original map as well. Now the tricky thing is to determine the direction of flow, and this map has a lot going on. But the first thing is to establish that rivers always flow from highland to lowland. Now we have to determine which part of the map is highland and which part is the lowland. 
The easiest way to identify high land and low land is to look at the contours. Larger contours will indicate high land and vice versa. I know that some contours aren't really visible for you to see, so let me highlight them. 800, 700, 750, 700, 700, 700, 600, 650, 600, 600, and 450. So all these contours were written on the map, not the ones I deduced by studying the contour interval. So it appears that the larger contours are located at the top of the map in the north to be precise, while the smaller contours are located at the bottom of the map in the south. So that means that the river flows from north to south, and if you want to be specific, north central to southwest. But some people at a glance may see the concentration of contour lines at the bottom and assume that the river originates from one of those highlands. But in this case, looking at the contour lines directly associated with the river, that's the one that is flowing through, the ones I've highlighted for you, it will begin in the north and flow southwards. And if we zoom into the lower course of the river, we can see that the river flows between the highlands, not originating from them. So I would love to hear your opinions in the comment section. Now that we've identified River Niamsu and its direction of flow, let's move on to the next thing, the ridge in the southeastern part of the map area. Now let's identify southeast. So that means that the ridge you're talking about is this one. Now all that's left to do is add it to your map. Please remember that our map is a sketch map, emphasis on the word sketch. This means that the ridge, you don't need to start counting all the contour lines and try to draw the exact same thing on a new map. That would be a massive waste of time. The examiners only want to be sure that you can identify southeast and that you are able to use your grid to put the ridge in a similar position as it is seen on the real map. Now you can see that this ridge in the southeast is not fancy, it's just something simple and sweet. The last thing we have to identify is the Jimmy Soka Kraba settlements. Now let's try to identify this on the map. And we can see that here. So using our grid, let's place this settlement on our new map. Now we've identified all the three things asked in the question. Let's add some finishing touches to our map. Finally, we've succeeded in answering questions 1A and B. Please remember in exam, use pencil. For everything, I only use colored pens to make it easier to identify and for aesthetic purposes, use pencil in exam. Now moving on to the next question. Describe three characteristics of a feature running from southwestern to the northeastern part of Nigeria. Now let's look at our map to find out what feature this is. Okay, so the feature is not River Niamsu, as we've already indicated its direction of flow. So let's put our cardinal points. Now the feature is clear for us to see. Running from the southwest to the northeast is a ridge, a very large one at that. And some of its characteristics include, it is a ridge that cuts across the whole map, extending from the southwest to the northeastern portion of the map area. There's a high concentration of roads and railways in the northeastern part of the map. In the northeastern part of the map, the slopes are gentle and hence we have some populated settlements in this area, along with a lot of markets. The map also presents with a dendritic stream pattern that flows into and out of the ridge. I didn't make up any of these characteristics, I deduced them by comparing the feature in question, the ridge, with the key of the map, which is always given. That's how I know that those black and white things across the map represent real ways, and the capital letter M that I can see in those settlements represent markets. Now moving on to the last question. Describe three ways in which transportation network is influenced by the relief in the mapped area. The gentle slopes in the northeastern part of the ridge allow the passage of railways and roads. Railways run across the whole map from north to south. In doing so, it avoids steep slopes on the ridge. There is a poor network in the southeastern parts of the map due to the ridge there. And the presence of the ridge that runs from the northeastern that runs from the southwestern part of the map to the northeastern part prevents communication of footpaths from west to east. These are all the things we just discussed. With that, we've completed work 2024 map or correction. And with that, we come to the end of this video. So now we are up to date in our web corrections. So now I'm going to be working on echo correction videos, but I'll still release some videos explaining some key concepts. Work for private candidates, which is also known as GCE, should have already started. And you'll be writing your geography in early December or so. So make sure to watch all the correction videos in order to help you revise. And make sure to check out our Instagram page. The link is in the description below, where I'll be sending some questions. If you have any topics you want videos on, type them out in the comment section. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.